Okay, I thought I'd do a video on uh, alternative ways to defend yourself. If you live in some shithole commie state where you can't get a firearm, uh, firearm, it's really hard or expensive. You know, you have to go through, jump through these hoops to do it. Um, you know, maybe you should look into like black powder or muzzle loader um, firearms. Now, you need to look into this because it varies state to state. I'm going to try to watch what I say here. Because I'm not sure if the same rules apply where you live, right? So look into your, check your local laws, right? Talk to a lawyer in your area. Here in Texas, um, a lot of these black powder, I forget if it's, I forget the year. I'm not going to even mention it. But after a certain year, I have it written down. It's like 19, or 1870 or 1890, I forget. But under that year... They're considered antique firearms. They don't fall under firearms. There's no FFL. You can just buy buy it in a magazine and have it shipped to you. You can just go and buy them off the store shelves, right? Just take them and go. Now, it's not legal if you're uh, a felon, so definitely don't do that. But uh, look into it. Check your state and local laws. Maybe that's a way to go. I know in some places you can own the... Uh, the black powder revolver, you just can't have the the ball and the powder in the same area. So maybe, I don't know, check again, check your state and local laws. Maybe you can keep the, the powder and the ball and, you know, everything else you need, the beeswax and all, uh, in, a, in a box or something, in some sort of chest in the uh, closet. And again, check your state and local laws, man. And maybe keep the, uh, the the revolver or something in your car or something, right? That way you're not breaking the law technically. Um, but if shit hit the fan, well, you know, on your way home, you just grab that son of a bitch and run up to your, your house. If there's, without rule of law, well then, you know, law don't really matter in that scenario. If you got nutcases that are going to try to kill you, right? Uh, but again, check your state and local laws before you purchase a black powder. Because it varies state to state, man. But that's one idea. And uh, look into, if you, can't, if you can't do that, let's say you're a, a felon or something. I still think you should be able to defend yourself. So how about looking into like a crossbow or a compound bow? I'm not sure how that applies to you. Again, uh, state by state. Right? Check your local laws. And um, talk to a lawyer. But... Crossbow or compound bow? Most of the armor out there is Kevlar. So let's say some dude busts into your house. And you get him with a bolt, right? Well, it's going to go through that armor. Right? Kevlar cannot stop a blade. I mean, if you got a uh, a rifle plate, plate in behind it, yeah. But the Kevlar itself will not stop a blade. You can cut that with scissors. So, a bolt or a compound bow might work for you. If not, you know, hey, man, a machete maybe, a baseball bat, something. You better figure out some way to defend yourself depending on where you live. I remember, and I'm not recommending this, but I remember as a kid, I could come up with things. I'd see the L.A. riots and stuff on TV, and you hear about some guy getting killed, pulled from his truck, and just beaten to death. And I'm a kid, like, man, why did they kill that guy? He didn't do anything. And I'm just like, there's some crazy people out there. I would, you know, I was just a kid. So, of course, I'm not thinking, well, you know, I'm going to go into my dad's safe. I didn't know what he had in there. But I'm like, man, I hope he has something in there. But I thought about it. Well, even if he did, I can't get into that damn safe. He was pretty smart not to let me look in there. What he had, hey, little kid ain't going to know. And I do the same thing now. But I'll think, well, if they, you know, if I hear something, I'm going to go and get the nail gun, you know. And I'll hit him up with that if I have to. I knew... It would probably be illegal, and I'm not recommending this. But as a kid, I'm like, you know, hey, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wind up like those people. You know, you see them burning down buildings and stuff like that. Like, I'm not winding up like those guys. If they're gonna come and pick a fight with me, and my family, and attack us, I'm gonna do something about it. And I thought about doing that. You know, run to the garage, load that sucker up, and there you go. That'll change your mind pretty quick. Again, I'm not recommending it, but I'm just saying a kid can think of that. So you can come up with alternative ways. In a shit hit the fan scenario. Not now, right? I remember paintball. I used to like paintball. 
And I remember we had one that had a problem. It was ma- it was damaged or something. I don't know. I, like, I hell with it. I didn't care. I paid that very little for it. And I remember I loaded up with marbles, and I would tear the hell out of this old pumpkin we had uh, for Halloween, blast bottles. And I remember hitting the wood with the, with that damn thing, and it dent the shit out of the wood. And I'm like, huh. You know, if somebody busted in here, again, a kid, right? Man, I could just... Uh, Load this thing up and go to town with this thing. It's not something I wanted to do, but I was just a kid and I couldn't have a firearm. And I wasn't going to be a victim. So I'm like, okay, here we go. I can figure, you know, I figured something out there. And I remember, you know, before that, my pellet gun. I used to love pellet and BB guns. I had one that was both. Uh, you pump it up and you blast. And, uh, you know, I, I got pretty good at that. I'm like, well, you know, I got pretty good... I'm a pretty good shot with this thing, if need be. You know, hey, I'll defend myself with this. But as a kid, I think about that. I didn't want to be just one of these statistics or a victim. And you need to use your head and think of alternative ways. If you can't have a firearm, what can you do? Again, the nail gun, the paintball gun. Um, I'm not recommending that. I'm just giving you uh, just uh, examples. Hey, look, me as a young kid, I could think of ways to defend myself if I needed to. A boy is not going to be able to fight off a man that busts in there looking to do bad, right? And I knew that. I know I get my behind whooped easily, right? A young boy cannot fight up, fight against a full-grown man. So I'm like, okay, I'll even the odds. And again, I couldn't have a firearm at that age, so hey. So use your head, you know, check into the uh, black powder firearms technically in some places are not considered firearms or antique firearms it, it, it varies so much i don't even want to get that much into it but look into it check your state and local laws right crossbow or compound bow man that's been you know that's that's messed people stuff up big time through history so if you can legally do that maybe you should look into that right of course the old baseball bat or machete i mean you probably wouldn't even have to use the machete someone sees that damn thing and they have a knife and they break in there, they're out of there, man. They are gone. And then after they run off, you know, you better go mop up the puddle they made there. But I don't think many people would try to, you know, come at you with a knife or something and you got this big-ass blade. Hell no. So use your head, guys. And again, um, check your state and local laws. Don't break any laws. But use your head. Right? That's the best weapon of all. All right, I'm out, guys. Y'all have a good one. And uh, again, man, I can't stress it enough. Check your state and local laws. All right, I'm out.